Hello everyone. I love Vietnamese spaghetti. So I make it often. This time I make it with butter and eggs. So I call it my fancy Vietnamese spaghetti. Please come to the kitchen with me. I show you how. Welcome to Saigon Cook Travel. I am Saigon Cook. So I make a leaven now. I have a written recipe in the description box below. You can go there and uh, read the recipe. You can see my starter is blooming, rising so good. And I add it to the flour and the water and I mix it well and let it proof for two hours we still have one brand new nut you, you do that you use that to use up the key to make the Vietnamese spaghetti it's all this floating in the coffee here beautiful is you need to and have then very busy. strong can you give me starter so my starter um, is with me like um, more than two years now and every time I need to bake the bread I need to revise it to, to make sure my starter is strong I have a video um to show how i revive my starter you can go into my channel and find out for yourself it would be very helpful because the key to make beautiful bread is strong starter for the beginning so after two hours my um, leaven was risen now I add to all other ingredients I have uh, bread flour I use normal Pillsbury bread flour no fancy so I add some sugar, eggs, and butter. Normally I make my bread only with um, oil, um, salt, and sugar. And I use it in spare amount very little amount but this time I use more the quantity is more and I also add butter. in Vietnam where I work coming from they make the bread they tend to uh, add a little into it to uh, make sure they uh, bloom and run but I make it with a tea and never add any uh, chemical or Just very natural ingredients. Okay. You can see I have the water next to me. I have a little bit of I have And I add my water down to me. Adding 
the addition of the eggs so it's coming to the liquid as well so when I put the eggs first and then I add the water afterwards to make sure that I don't over water and I use bit too very low speed for eight minutes and after everything mixing and I it is almost done I increase the speed into it's bit four and I mix it only two minutes so total only uh, 10 minutes my uh, kitchen aid is very very good one so i think that i don't need to to need a lot i saw some people making bread they need to mix like a 20 minutes or so not with me i always um, mix at low speed and less time so I'm I dump my dough onto the counter and I make it into a bone with a few um, knitting and I let it root for three hours now. My room temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit and after three hours they look at my dough my dough is risen beautifully and now i will divide my dough and pre-shape it and i will let it pre-shape for 15 minutes and after that i will shape my dough So this time, I don't retard my um, dough at all. You see the first proof three hours. Now I shape, pre-shape my dough and then shape my dough. Then after that, I will let my dough proof and I will be, uh, I be I will back it same day. So, with my ing uh, in ingredients, I make into nine loaves. Each one is uh, less than 130 grams of the wet dough. If you want to make it bigger, you can make it into A's or whatever um, heavy how heavy you want you can do it so I, I make it 126 130 is perfect for one Thai eating not so much and not so small so first i pre-shape it into the ball you see i uh, run in my hands like that to make some tension to, to the surface of the dough it will make my Spread uh, skin better later. Now I make some room so that I can uh, show you how I shape my dough. So this is the first one that I roll into the bowl. So like I said that I let it rest, I let them rest for 15 minutes. 
Now, in this time, I make a, re, a triangle. You can use the rolling pin or you can use your hands. I think I uh, prefer without the rolling pin because uh, the dough, when I did that, on the bubbles inside the dough or uh, have the risk of being deflated. So I just, um, I think I just use my hand to stretch. You can see, because you stretching by hands, it's difficult to stretch at one time. So I stretch on up from the number one to number nine, and then I come back the number one again, and I will shape it now. So in my hands right now is number one. After it rests a little bit, waiting for me do the following. Now it's re more relaxed and uh, it's easy to shape now. You notice that, that I try to make the, my ends, the end of the dough, um, very thin. So that later when I roll my uh, loaf into it, the dough, uh, the edge will stick into my loaf. You can see I roll and tuck, roll and tuck, so that make very tight loaf. And I think when it tie like this, when it's, it's baked in the oven, it will uh, re bloom and rise and we will have a beautiful a big fluffy a loaf so you can see here now i start the number two the same thing i try the edge thin and then i, I stretch more to make it longer So I run and tuck, run and tuck. I also pinch the edge so that is uh, nicely uh, tight. Now this is the final step that I do. I roll so that the everything snugly sit and bob end is nicely um, pointed. And I also use parchment paper on top of my backing racks so that later don't have the risk of sticking the bread into the bacon racks. You notice now my dough, after I'm shaped them, they are small and pointed. And you will notice later, I will show you after they are being proof, it will become very fatty.
look very lovely now this um, parchment paper I, I just reuse from the from the last bag I, I bought a very good for quality parchment paper so only one use and throw away feel so sorry so I try to reuse that okay so now i think that i'm happy with my shaping and i cover it to proof before that i uh, sprinkle on some water to make it uh, wet the cover wet so i proof in the oven until about two hours so until they are double in size you can see it's thin before now it's puffy this is the, the uh, way you test your dough if you put your hands in there and the hole slowly return recover that means the dough is broke enough if you put your hands in and the horn immediately uh, retracts that means not broke enough or if you pop your hand in and the horns never return that means you over over proof now i score my loves i found that um, when i make my vietnamese baguette the lamb is the best tune to score when i make sourdough bones or batons i can use just a razor blade to easy to score uh, and make patterns but for the baguette the vietnamese baguette i found the lamb like this help to keep um, the score shallow and uh, horizontal with the press so that later after back uh, it's a rise up with the ears that's what I'm looking for after I'm done scoring I uh, sprinkle wood uh, water and they are going to the oven so I intended to back at uh, 475 degree but because i scored when i done i am done scoring the oven only reach 430 degrees and i don't want to my dough after i score a set too long before going to the oven so i got to put my bread into the oven now why the oven the temperature keep rising because i set it up for 475 degrees so when the temperature uh, reach the set that means 475 degrees my bread almost golden brown so I turn down the temperature into 425 degrees and 
gonna I back for like two three minutes more and they are already very golden brown so I turn up the oven so that is because my oven I think is very good and you if you do you need to um, study or know your oven now you can see they come out beautiful and now I use the uh, butter wrap wrapper to um, smear onto my bread to make it shiny a little bit After this, we will test the bread and I show you the crumbs that what we are looking for but take a, a quick look again my bread came out very beautiful I'm happy with it now you can see I test my bread they crunchy I bread I press down it bouncing back and now let's see the crumbs look so soft and tender and evenly uh, airy now let me uh, have a taste test you can see so so fluffy fluffy inside and flavorful the crust is so thin and crispy thank you very much for uh, watching I hope you like my video please like share my video and subscribe to my channel and I will come I will see you uh, in the next video bye bye